So what's up guys, this is the round bottom flask and in this visual tutorial we will apply the concepts that we have learned in electrophilic aromatic substitution on both benzene and monosubstituted benzene on the synthesis of di-substituted benzenes. So let's say we're given this molecule and we have to set, synthesize it using benzene as a starting material and we can use any reaction that we have uh, on our disposal that we have learned so far in, on, let's say, your previous chemistry courses and also on electrophilic aromatic substitution. So the first thing that you need to consider is the directing effects of each of these substituents that you're going, uh, that you're going to attach in your aromatic ring. So we start at our final product, which is this one here. So if we use the IUPAC name, so this is named as uh, ortho bromo acyl benzene. Okay, so ortho bromo acyl benzene. So we have a bromo group, which we know is a halogen group. So it is an ortho and para directing deactivator and this one is <clears throat> and this is an alkyl group which is an ortho and para directing activator okay so we consider here both the directing effects and their effects on the reactivity on the aromatic ring before we design our synthesis map. Now, let's, so in order to synthesize this map, um, the most convenient approach I believe in this case is the retrosynthetic approach. So, so by, uh, when we say a retrosynthetic approach, we work our re uh, synthesis map backwards. So from the reactor, from the final product, we, uh, draw what's the uh, immediate pr uh, step that will lead you to this final product. Uh, then we repeat that on the subsequent uh, reactant until we arrive at our starting material. So in this case here, for also bromo acyl benzene, there are two possible pathways here. So for the, um, the first pa possible pathway is we can do a uh, halogenation reaction Um, electrophil um, aromatic uh, bromination reaction. So, since this will attach a bromo group here, so that means the starting material should be the acyl the uh, acyl benzene the acyl benzene without the bromo substituent. Okay. So remember that your acyl group, which is an alkyl group, is also an ortho and para directing Deacti uh, deactivator or rather in power directing activator so so this is possible that upon allylic bromination you will form uh, sorry not allylic bromination upon radic uh, aromatic bromination you will form this final product right so another pathway that I can think of is a fetal crafts alkylation we're in, we have uh, an ethyl, uh, we use uh, uh, ethyl chloride as an alkyl chloride, then your aluminum chloride to give you, which will start, of course, from bromobenzene, okay? So, um, let's say this is pathway A and this is pathway B. So in pathway A, so what um, other, okay, so what other reaction that we can think of that will give you an alkyl product? So um, based on our reactions that we have learned so far, one will think that we can 
get this ethyl benzene in the intermediate product uh, uh, that, uh, what they call this in the initial final product, the middle product from uh, using Friedel Crafts al alkylation, which uses ethyl benzene, uh, ethyl chloride, or chloroacetate, and aluminum chloride to from benzene, the starting material. Now, this so that means this can also be a so that means. Um, on pathway B, on the other hand, bromobenzene can be synthesized from benzene using um, radical brom ar aromatic bromination. Which is this one, diba? Right? Now, What's the pro now the problem on both pathways is that it uses um, it uses Friedel Crafts alkylation, and we know that Friedel Crafts alkylation will lead to polysubstituted products. So, for example, in your pathway A, if we take this reaction here, what will happen is that you will form a combination of uh, ethyl benzene and the ortho and para diethyl benzene. You will get a combination of ortho and para diethyl benzene on top of your mono monoalkylated mono benzene product. Okay, same goes on this one. So you will form, you will form also uh, polysubstituted products. Okay, both of pathway B. So this will have um, problems in your uh, purification and isolation. And as much as possible, we would like to design an efficient synthesis such that. Not only it will reduce the number of steps, but also it will ensure that only one product is produced in each of, uh, in each of the steps of the reaction. And also, ano tawa dito? And also to ensure that there will be a uh, that will there will be a. Uh, of uh, the yield of the final product of the synthesis of the final final product will be maximized. So in this case, if we use Friedel Crafts alkylation, we the total the final yield of the product will not be that great because in the middle of your in the first step palang you will have more um uh side products that you do not want in your reaction, and this will again not only have a problem in your purification, isolation, and isolation, which actually takes a majority, um, a major chunk of time in your uh, organic synthesis, but also this will significantly reduce the yield of your final product, of your synthesis route. So, one thing that I can think of is to ensure that there is no poly substitution There is no poly substitution reaction. We have to use Friedel Crafts isolation. However, we cannot. However, if we use Friedel Crafts isolation, and we know that Friedel Crafts isolation does not lead to poly, uh, poly substitu substituted products. However, your final product is an alkyl group. Okay. So we know that um, we know from the Friedel Crafts isolation that your our real carbonyls can be reduced using uh, via Clemenson reduction using a, a specially prepared zinc uh, zinc amalgam in hydrochloric acid under reflux. To produce your to reduce the carbonyl group to form your 
alkyl benzenes. Uh, to form your alkyl benzene. So we were going to use that. We were going to use that to synthesize our acyl benzene uh, intermediate in our pathway A to uh, produce, which will which we will need to produce the final product, which is our arsal uh, bromo acyl benzene. Okay. So that means our carbonyl group should our uh, aryl benzene would be this because this is the one that is reduced this carbonyl group is the one that is reduced to give you your acyl benzene in the middle product next is we do friedel crafts acylation so we're gonna use uh, this acyl chloride To give you and and uh, using using aluminum chloride as our catalyst on uh, in dimethyl dichloromethane solvent, which will come from our benzene and that starting material. So that is for pathway A. Now we will ca we can also apply this principle to our pathway B. So in pathway B, instead of the uh, um, instead of using Friedel Crafts acylation, uh, alkylation, we will use Friedel Crafts acylation. So that means you will, um, just like what we did here, the first step will be the Clemenson reduction. To give you <clears throat> this um, this disubstituted aryl ketone, then we proceed to your acyl chloride. Oh, sorry, we proceed then to Friedel Crafts acylation. We were again. This is a retrosynthetic approach. So you notice that we're draw we're working our way backwards to the starting react material. Then lastly, to go back to our benzene from bromobenzene, we have our uh, aromatic bromination. So this is, let's say, pathway A and pathway B. Now between the two, are these, uh, um, are the two pathways just as efficient, um, have the same, the same efficiency with, res um, with respect to each other, with respect in producing the final product. Now, if you look at the reaction, and if you go back to the reactivity of the substituent, um, the effects of the substituents on the reactivity towards the aromatic ring, you will you will see that the bromo group is um, <clears throat> is a deactivator, while the alkyl group is an activator. So, what does that mean? That means if you attach the bromo group first, the resulting uh, bromo benzene is slightly is uh, less reactive towards uh, electroph towards subsequent electrophilic aromatic substitution in comparison to your alkyl ben uh, to your alkyl group, which uh, further increases the reactivity of the aromatic ring towards the electrophilic aromatic substitution. So what does that mean? In order for you to have a higher yield and a faster reaction, you have to attach the electro the activator first. Okay? So in this case, pathway A gives us allows us to attach the act the activator first via um Friedel class of acylation followed by Clemenson reduction while in pathway B the bromination comes first which which uh, further deactivates the ring towards subsequent electrophilic aromatic substitution that means the 
uh, Friedel Crafts Isolation will have a sl uh, will will be uh, will be um, quote unquote, will be say harder to perform. Thus, it will give you um will probably give you a lower yield. A lower yield of your ASIL product, which you will need for clemency and reduction. For clemency and reduction, thus pathway A is the better option. Okay, so this is your final answer. Wait long. Eraser. Yeah, this will make my life easier. So this is actually your proposed synthesis. This is the most efficient synthesis route. Well, if you have suggestions, just drop it down in the comment section of this video. I am open to suggestions, guys. Let's next is this one. <clears throat> next is this one. So this one is a meta directing deactivator. This one, because this is a carbonyl group, this is a meta directing deactivator, and this alkyl group is an ortho and para directing activator. Now, if you look at the two substituents, they are ortho with respect to each other. So, what does that mean? That means is that you attach you attach uh, this alkyl, the alkyl group first in the, uh, into the aromatic ring before attaching the carbonyl group because this one is an ortho, is an ortho directing activator. So, so in order for you to achieve an ortho disubstituted product, you attach the ortho director first. So, how do we do that? <clears throat> so that means if we design our retrosynthetic approach, if we do this retrosynthetically, the last reaction, the, so the immediate reaction that will produce your final product is obviously the attachment of this carbonyl group, which can only be achieved through Friedel Crafts acylation. So what is the acyl chloride that you're going to use? So you just count the number of carbon atoms. So that is one, two, three. So that means you will need a three carbon at uh, a three carbon chain, followed by a which is attached to a carbonyl group, and you have an acyl and you just attach it with a chloro substituent. And this is the acyl chloride that you're going to need in your Friedel Crafts acylation reaction. Next is <clears throat> so the immediate pro the immediate precursor of this final product is obviously your alkyl benzene. Okay, so the only thing there are two other there are only two ways that uh, we can use of uh, that we can attach an alkyl group. So one is the Friedel Crafts alkylation and the other is the Friedel Crafts acylation followed by Clemenson reduction of the carbonyl group in your aryl in your aryl carbonyls. So how do we <clears throat> so which one is we will prefer? So obviously a Friedel Crafts alkylation is out of the question because one it will give you disubstituted products. So, for example, if this was synthesized in your using Friedel Crafts uh, alkylation reaction, so on top of this, so on top of this, you will also have uh, polysubstituted products, which is this one, which is a, uh, which is an ortho group, which is an ortho disubstituted benzene, and the para dialkylated benzene, because 
because remember yet your alkyl group that this al that this alkyl group is an ortho and para directing activator plus Z plus you will have a rearrangement product because because this one because this one is this uh this al this alkyl chloride when it turns into a carbocate ion can undergo rearrange uh can undergo a hydride shift to give you a more stable carbocation and this one is will give you to the rearrangement products okay so and we don't want and we don't want uh too many side products in our reaction, so this is out of the question. So your field craft's alkylation is out of the question. Therefore, the only way to proceed is through field craft's acylation followed by Clemenson reduction. So in the Clemenson reduction, we use a zinc, a specially prepared zinc mercury amalgam um, under HCl and reflux. So this is the resulting acyl chloride, then followed by uh, craft Then after the Clemenson reduction, we have now the Friedel-Crafts acylation. So again, this is a, a, a three carbon. We added three carbons, a three carbon chain rather in our alkyl group. Uh, in our not alkyl group, aromatic ring rather. So this to give you, that's it. So this is your final, this is your synthesis route for letter B. So let's have a, a last example. So how do we synthesize the following products? This is actually the much easier part because we have this, because the Iago group is an ortho and Para uh, act, uh, deactivator, uh, or also in para directing deactivator, and your carbonyl group, which which is a meta directing deactivator. So since your disubstituted uh, product is a para disubstitute, it's a para disubstituted. You don't have any other choice, but you. Attach your iodo group first, then followed by the attachment of your carbonyl group. So the only way to do it is via, um, you can, well, you don't need to actually use a retrosynthetic approach. If you can imagine it immediately, it's okay if you design the synthesis route directly. So we know that we have to attach the iodo group first. So... To attach the iodo group, you will need iodine. Um, what I use here is iodine in copper chloride. Um, iodine with copper chlo copper two chloride, <clears throat> so that you will produce an uh, your iodo benzene. Uh, the, the iodo benzene intermediate uh, middle product, then followed by Friedel Crafts acylation. <clears throat> Friedel Crafts acylation. So again, if you know the sol if you know the solvent, don't forget to place this. Uh, if you know the solvent that is usually used, don't forget to place the solvent because I s that is also important in when you're deciding your synthesis route. To give you your final product. So this is our proposed synthesis route. So this is the end of our. So this is the end of uh, the video tutorial for, on how to synthesize your dye substituted benzenes. So thank you again for watching this video, and if if you like this video, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. 
So if you have any questions or if you have any suggestions on how to synthesize the compounds that I have shown in this uh, video tutorial, please, uh, please write it down on the comment section of this video. So uh, once again, this is the round bottom flask and thanks for watching.